This is chapter 18, mouth, throat, nose, and sinuses. The chapter 18 objectives, including describing the structure and function of mouth, throat, nose, and sinuses, discussing the risk factors for oral cancer, and discussing an accurate nursing history of mouth, throat, nose, and sinuses. Differentiating between the normal and abnormal findings, and describing the variations that are seen. Then in addition to that, describing the findings seen when assessing across the lifespan, including the older adult. The structure and function to be discussed in chapter 18 is the mouth, which is the beginning of the digestive and respiratory tract. The oral cavity includes the lips, cheeks, the uvula and tongue, the hard palate, and the soft palate. You can see the hard palate is in the front of the roof of the mouth and the soft palate is in the back. There's also salivary glands to help process food. The uvula is an extension of the soft palate in the back. There's a tongue that's the muscle connected to the floor of the mouth by the frenulum. And um, the gums that are covered by mucous membranes holding the teeth in place. The th uh, throat or pharynx is located behind the mouth and nose. And it's a passage for food and air. The upper part is the nasal pharynx. And the lower part is the oral pharynx that comes down and connects into the esophagus. There are also on either side as tonsils um, that um, are in the oral and nasal pharynx space. So the nose um, has a bridge to the tip and then two nares. The septum separates the cavity into those two halves. It is very vascular and the front of the sep uh, septum has this chysobax area that is uh, very prone to nosebleeds. Nasal hairs filter products um, that might be breathed into the nose and uh, warms and moistens the air. The sinuses, um, all four of those sinuses are the frontal, maxillary, ethmoidal, and sphenoidal. These cavities have resonant chambers to help with speech and trap debris um, before it is uh, breathed in. Um, but as would make sense, the debris is there and that's a primary site of infection if it gets blocked. In the beginning of this chapter, we talk about cancer, the risk assessments for cancer and the education to provide. So we know cancer um, for most of the systems in the body, tobacco products, um, are a uh, negative and a risk for those patients, in addition to excess alcohol. So we want to avoid smoking, avoid heavy alcohol, and maintain good oral hygiene and a healthy diet. Some of the things we talk to our patients about when uh, we're dealing with these um, organ systems are, have they had surgery in the past? Any history of frequent sinus infections, or do they use nasal sprays? Because we know nasal sprays can cause rebound sinus issues as well. History of allergies. If you live in Texas for long periods of time, most everybody has some type of history of allergies. Um, any frequent treatments for mouth, nose, or throat? Smoking and lifestyle practices, of course. And any dental appliances, braces, uh, dentures, or dental care. Um, when we talk to our patients about any history of mouth sores and lesions, whether it be um, candida, infection, canker sores, any history of herpes simplex would be important to know. Any issues with redness, swelling, bleeding in the gums, any hoarseness, especially new onset or difficulty swallowing like dysphagia. Um, when somebody has difficulty swallowing, that puts them at risk for aspiration, so it's very important to know how your patient swallows. And any recent histories of sore throats, viral, uh, viral infections, colds, and allergies, et cetera. Um, we wanna ask about any chronic, acute or chronic sinusitis, nosebleeds, any drainage from uh, a running nose, things like that. Um, any history of deviation septum or broken nose and any issues with smell. In sinusitis, some risk um, for the patient to get this. Maybe they've had issues with their nasal passage. Things are harder to um, uh, 
they get stuck in the sinus cavities. Any um, inflammatory responses, like with medical conditions or immunity issues, and asthma um, can have an inflammatory response as well. So we want to encourage our patients to avoid colds or flu, have good hand hygiene, um, minimize their risk for flu by getting the vaccine, and care for their asthma, taking the medications to help with inflammation. When we inspect the mouth, we're looking at the lips for a specific color. We know central cyanosis, um, that's the uh, bluish uh, lip color in the mouth, but there also is some pallor. If somebody has anemia, low, um, low blood values, they can have pallor, especially in that oral mucosa. We inspect the teeth and gums um, for dental caries or cavities. Um, do they have their teeth? Are they broken or missing? Um, those type of dental hygiene things um, can really um, help you understand how does your patient um, eat um, and attain nutrition. So some of the abnormal findings in the mouth are again that herpes simplex. You can see this cleft lip down here, um, and then uh, the the cheolosis on the corners of the mouth over there. Now here's some pictures of the gingival hyperplasia where we have the inflamed gums, and then we have the gingivitis where the gums are receding. We inspect the buccal mucosa for specific things. Um, utilizing light is important. Um, your pigmentation might be different in different uh, skin tone patients, but um, the big things that we want to address are the leukoplakia, um, which is a precancerous lesion, candidiasis, which is a um, yeast um, infection, um, thrush is what we call it. It's white curd-like patches, um, canker sores. A lot of us have had canker sores where you tend to bite the inside of your mouth. And then complex spots are signs of early meat. So here's a picture of the candidiasis and the leukoplakia. We inspect and palpate the tongue for color, size, making sure the tongue is well adhered. Um, we're looking for it to be deep, pink, moist, um, without any lesions. And we're always looking under the tongue for any um, cancerous lesions. So we're also going to assess for strength and taste. We assess with that cranial nerve 12 by pressing the tongue into the side of the cheek. And the healthcare provider provides a resistance on, on the outside of the mouth. So um, we are looking at normal strong resistance on both sides. Well, some of the abnormal findings for the tongue, um, maybe the tongue is enlarged or the mouth is very dry with hydration, that's not uncommon. Um, some abnormalities of the oropharynx, we talked about the coplic spots with measles. Um, also, we're gonna be talking about the tonsillitis and the pharyngitis. And then here's another picture of cleft palate. You'll see how it goes all the way up in the top of the cleft. In the hard palate. So the anterior hard palate is in the front and the posterior soft palate is in the back. So again we have this candidal infection that could be anywhere in the mouth. Um, there are some purple lesions sometimes that are seen um, in the buccal mucosa and on the palate um, that are related to Kaposi sarcoma or AIDS. If there's a yellow tint to the buccal mucosa we sometimes see that with jaundice. And then the cleft palate, obviously, you see that with the picture there. It's a, um, a developmental issue in utero. When we assess the uvula, we are looking for the little protrusion of skin that's in the soft palate in the back of the throat. And when the patient says, ah, that tissue should raise symmetrically. So the expectation is there's no redness or exudate that's a symmetric rise. If there's a loss of movement or asymmetric movement of the uvula, um, we might relate that to cranial nerve 9 or 10. So when we look at the tonsils, um, whether present or absent, if somebody's had tonsillectomy, 
Uh, obviously, the tonsils would not be present, but we're looking for them to be pink and symmetric, or one plus on either side of the um, of the oropharynx is expected. Now, as they get enlarged, two, three, and four plus, they are growing toward the center. So we're going to expect inspect the pharyngeal wall and um, um, assess for any enlarged tonsils or exudate or um, uh, lesions in that area. So here's a picture of how we grade the tonsils. So one plus obviously is against the wall and as they get larger um, the grading increases. So when the tonsils begin to touch the uvula they are a three plus. When they touch each other they are a four plus. Now when we assess the nose, we're looking and inspecting the external nose for color, consistency, and shape, any tenderness. We expect it to be the same color as the face and that the structures are smooth and symmetric, including the nasolabial folds. We're checking patency for airflow by putting one finger on one nose and sniffing with the other nair um, and making sure there's no occlusion there. So when we inspect the inner nose, we're looking for a clear um, uh, um, nair there for airway. Now, if there's a, the septum that separates the nose is deviated to one side or the other, that might block some of the airway. So um, here's some pictures of a deviated septum below. Um, also, if the um, inner nose is swollen, um, allergies are causing um, inflammation that is not going to be good for the airway. So we are always looking for any exudate or um, congestion and inflammation in that area, as well as any bleeding um, or crusting with irritation. Now ulcers, like a perforated septum, sometimes is related to trauma or maybe chemicals that are being inhaled in the nose. Here are some pictures of some of those abnormal findings. Again, epistaxis is the bleeding, the perforated septum. There's actually a hole in that tissue. And sometimes polyps or um, uh, overgrowth of tissue are formed in the nose as well in the sinus spaces. Now, if you're in ER or have children or any of those type of things, be aware that children might put um, Legos or um objects into their nose and sometimes they have to have those removed because without that airway your patient might be in trouble now when we palpate the sinuses we're assessing for any tenderness crepitus um or uh, pain fluid um there's a lot of people like i said with sinuses and allergies um in uh in texas so Sometimes you might um, feel some of those sinus tissues. But earlier I showed a picture of exactly where those sinuses are. You have your frontal sinuses on your forehead, the maxillary that's across your zygomatic process, and then the ethmoid that's around the inner parts of your eyes, and the sphenoid that's behind that. So the ones that you can palpate, obviously, are the maxillary and the frontal. So in summary, you want to be familiar with the structures in your mouth, throat, nose, and sinuses, any older adult considerations, your risk assessments for patients with oral pharyngeal cancer, procedures for inspection and palpation for the mouth, and abnormal findings that you might see, normal and abnormal findings. And then again, the correct uh, procedures for inspection and palpation of the nose.